Now where does the arrow rest go? Well, go ahead and at this point we would put on our string level. We would verify from the front of the bow that we are right, left, this way, tilting, rotating off the the bow axis. We'd come back here, make sure it's straight up and down, plumb. And then what we're next thing we're going to look for, the last thing, is this arrow level. So what we do is we adjust, come around this side, you see on this rip cord, there's a, this piece right here goes up and down. There's a little, the little thing that you loosen, this, this screw right here, you loosen it, and you can slide up and down on this dovetail. And you slide up and down in dovetail with your piece in the up position until you get this thing level. The next task is to set the left and right position of your arrow rest to your bow. Now you can do it one of the easiest ways nowadays is with this arrow centering tool. It ain't real high tech. What you do is this the little knob at the bottom goes left and right as you need it. You need a clean spot, clean flat spot on the riser which is hard to find. So you either need to take off your sight mount, take it off and you have a flat piece of riser. Or if your bow just happens to have a flat piece of riser, you can do it that way. It goes on something like this. You can find your flat part of your riser, go down to the tail end, move that donut left and right until you find the center. Then when you rotate it back around to the front, you've got a reference point. Does it need to go in? Does it need to go out? What is, what is your requirement? It's just a little jig that needs a flat spot on the riser. Now there are other things, there are laser jobs that you can mount where your side is and spin it, it does the same thing. You adjust it in to find the back and when you rotate it to the front it needs to be in exactly the same position. An alternate method would be to use something like a caliper. You may be able to use a uh, little pocket scales. They make them a lot of fastener companies give them away uh, what they have uh, fractions on the back and decimals on the front and you slide the little clip up and down as a marker you can use them and you can come around in front and then measure from the back to the center of the arrow and the back and the center of the arrow and when those two numbers match you've got it center of your space it depends on what you have and how you want to do it but you're just trying to find that center spot now the level it's to give you your up and down so that you're not plowing downhill, you're not running uphill. And it's driven off of the position of the knot, which is driven off of string center. There are many choices when you come to an arrow rest. Now this particular one is one I think one of the best. It is a rip cord and it is designed to hold your arrow in place and also then it drops down when the arrow flies so it gets out of the way you got total fletching clear any little twist or jerk or torque heel the boat it, it works it just works it works by putting the least amount of influence on the arrow as it flies whisker biscuits are fairly cheap some of them are expensive and they capture your arrow's not going to fall off but uh, any little flinch flinch in your form is going to throw your arrow off well you can go to two prongs well a two prong is pretty good but uh, it's hard to hunt with because your arrow wants to fall off so these type whether it be quad or a rip cord the, that feature of being able to lock it up into position holding your arrow and then drop out of the way when you shoot is a good thing but now we need to know how do we adjust it to get the centering that our measurement method or our centering tool told us we need to do. Just adjust that screw and you would tap it in and out very very lightly until you get your center. Remeasure back and forth until you get that centered. That's all there is to setting the rest. Now to finish setting up the arrow rest this as I mentioned before is a ripcord arrow rest. It is probably one of the best on the market. Quad makes some that are similar. You see this little bar up here it captures the arrow so as it runs through here it can't fall off. So you get all the benefits of something simple like the whisker biscuit but you don't have the shot interruption, the throwing off, the, the extra inaccuracy that having the arrow run through the whisker biscuit is going to do. It just simply holds the arrow all the way through the full stroke. 
purpose of a of a drop down is is that when it stroke pulls it drops down and gets completely out of the way the fletchings touch nothing it clears the bow you can heal it you can torque it and there's nothing there as long as it doesn't strike the uh, riser some way it's really about the best way to go but now you do have to set these things up you take the knot it comes with the setup see this part of the cable has uh, wrapping it served around it so what you want to do is you take your little, your little knot, get them nice and tight and snug and about pulled in position, but not all the way tight. Put it on here, and then when you draw the bow back, draw the bow back, it's going to pull this cable going down, and that's going to raise up the rip cord and do that about twice, get it a little bit snugger, and you might pull just a little bit of slack out here. And what will happen is, the next time you draw from a tripped position, it will come up, it will pull it till it's nice and tight as it's going to go, and it will stop because it can't pull anymore, and that little piece of string will slide through that little knot as far as it can go, let her down gently, tighten that sucker down right where it sits, and I bet you it's perfect.